Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'm going to be showing you how to make the salsa picante that we used for our flautas uh, on our last video. And I'm also going to share with you guys how to enhance the spice level because this salsa is already spicy, but we do have some of you that love it extra, extra picante. So please look in the description area for more details and let's get started with this delicious spicy salsa. To your pot of boiling water, you want to add 100 chiles de arbol. That is 100, I repeat, we're gonna keep this salsa 100. <laughs> Add two tomatoes, 10 garlic cloves. For those of you that like it super, super picante, I suggest you get a hold of some Thai chilies. I'm gonna be using three Thai chilies in the recipe today, but if you don't have access to Thai chilies, not to worry, you can use two serranos and to enhance the deeper, profound flavor of this salsa picante, I'm gonna be using some chiltepines. And I have about 25 chiltepines. We're gonna boil our ingredients for about 10 to 15 minutes or until they're nice and soft. Go ahead and add all your ingredients into your blender. Add your salt. This salsa tends to take a lot of the salt, so start off with one tablespoon, taste it, and if you need a little bit more after you blend it, um, you can go ahead and add a little bit more, but don't go too heavy on the salt for this. And next, we wanna blend until smooth. Quick tip, if you're gonna be keeping this salsa in your refrigerator for longer than five days, you wanna add one tablespoon of vinegar. It's gonna change the flavor for you, but that means that you've preserved it and you can keep it a little bit longer. But if you're gonna be making this salsa for your party that day or your family taco night, you guys can just use it as it is. And boom, done. And this salsa is just very luxurious. You can freeze this salsa if you make a big batch and it's just you, but it's not gonna last long if you have a big family. It gets addictive because of the spiciness but it's, it's smooth. If you want a chunkier salsa, just use less uh, water, but this is about the perfect consistency for your salsa picante. And it makes a great gift if you just put in a mason jar and a cute little lid and write your name on there. It's just beautiful. Oh, Thank you, sister. You're so sweet. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Before I take a big bite, I'm gonna let you guys know what the difference is between Salsa and salsa picante. Salsa picante is the salsas you put on top of your tacos, your burritos. It's a little bit runnier. And the salsa, it's more of the chunkier uh, blends that we've shown you on here before. You, guys you, just, you just proved the point. It was running off the chip. Yeah, it really is running. <laughs> so let's take a big bite. I'm going to try and fit this all in my mouth. And if I cough, I'm sorry. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. That was such an ugly bite, guys. I'm sorry. I would say, so say, say hello to our ancestors if for some reason you passed from eating this. <laughs> mm. Hi. We'll miss you. Mm. No, you can handle heat. You're not going to die from this. That's so good. It's so flavorful. And okay, you know what this is bomb over? Some sunny side eggs. Yes, for your breakfast. You know how we like the salsa? Claude and I are really into a salsa chitapin that we buy in a bottle. And if you guys don't have access to that, try this. This is, it's so good because you get so much of the chile flavor. And then on your tongue, it's coated with, with spice, but it doesn't burn. It's not disgusting because I've had so many salsas where people just throw like endless amount of chiles in there just to make it spicy, but it has no flavor. This has flavor. It's really the best. Yeah. These are wonderful appetizers when the kids are staring at you that they're hungry. <laughs> hey, there are some kids that eat spicy, super spicy. I know your little one does and so Ooh. does my son. It's here. My nose is running. And my little guy loves spicy salsa. We sit down and whatever food we're eating, we'll grab the Thai chilies and we'll bite it. And then we just look at each other like, oh, this is going to be fire. There's a lot of heat packed into the Thai chilies, but... If you don't have access to them, just use more of the serranos because the serranos, sometimes they surprise you. You're like, where'd you come from, spicy little thing? So sassy. Mm-hmm. 
I can really eat a whole bag of chips in this salsa, so. Mm. So it's salsa plan to munch on. I'm gonna start dancing, you gotta cut it off. Also great on flautas, <laughs> great on hard chicken tacos, tostadas, I mean, you name it, nachos, ooh, burritos. Should I keep going? Yes, this salsa is perfect for baked nachos. I've been wanting to make that for you guys for a while, but I don't know if you guys are interested. Cause sometimes I like the regular nachos, but there's something about a tray of baked nachos that you can just go to town on. Let us know what your favorite kind of nachos are. Mine are either shredded beef or carne asada. Mm, I like chilorio. Of course you do, those are bomb. I'm a fan of chilorio because it's super easy the way that I make it. And friends, we are gonna be having a um, lunchbox uh, recipe coming very soon, so make sure to subscribe. Uh, click the bell for notifications. Love us as much as you can. I need a lot of love, like I told you, so I really appreciate all the kindness that you guys have been sharing with me. I love you guys so much. Yeah, <clears throat> this is very spicy. Bye friends. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the best carne asada marinade you've ever had. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need five to eight pounds of beef. You can use chuck, ribeye, or you can make it comfortable for your home. One cup of beer, one fourth of a cup of soy sauce, five finely chopped garlic cloves, a small bunch of chopped cilantro, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, or you can use the juice of one lime, two tablespoons of chicken bouillon, or you can use half a tablespoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one tablespoon of ground cumin and garlic powder, half a tablespoon of chili powder, black pepper, paprika, onion powder, ground ginger, and two tablespoons of olive oil. Let's start off by adding our beer, soy sauce, lime juice, garlic, cilantro, and the remaining seasonings. And now you just want to combine all your ingredients. And now you want to start adding your pieces of beef to your marinade. For best flavor, allow your beef to marinate overnight, but you can get away with marinating it for one hour. Now, pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you next. And every grill master knows that you have to allow your beef to come to room temperature before grilling for the juiciest and best carne asada you've ever had. Once you allow your beef to rest for 10 to 15 minutes, you want to start chopping it up. I'm going to need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Now who's ready for a big bite? Buen provecho, sister. Enjoy. Thank you. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a refreshing peach drink. By the end of this video, each and every one of you is gonna know how to work with your peaches and make an on-the-go drink 
or a super delicious ice treat. And friends, that's gonna save you and me a lot of money. Let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need six peaches, one carton of raspberries, six cups of water, half a carton of apple juice concentrate, and your desired amount of ice. Let's start off by cutting our peaches and removing the seed. You'll find that with peaches, the softer, more ripe ones, it'll be easier for you to remove the seed, but those that aren't so ripe, you're gonna have to slice your peaches and help it out a little bit. To your blender, you wanna add your peaches, raspberries, apple concentrate, water, and you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done! Optional but not necessary, you can add a few chopped peaches into your peach drink. And boom done, amigos. Who's ready for a taste? And here is the mom drink on the go. Now let me show you what I do for the boys. And friends, this is how I like to prep our drinks for whenever we have to run errands, doctor's appointments, those kind of things, uh, because I don't wanna be spending money. I don't wanna be waiting in the drive-thru and I definitely don't wanna be getting out to a store whenever I have to run my errands. So I hope this helps you guys even for packing for your lunch. And for our ice treats, also known as bolis, I've been using these little pouches. You can use your Ziploc bags and tie them up, whatever little frozen baggies you have available to you. Those are the ones you wanna use. I like these because I can uh, wash them and reuse them. How do you know when to stop filling up the bag? I kind of keep about an inch because whenever I'm sealing it, everything, if I come all the way to the top, it'll just pour out. So I keep about an inch from the top. I really like these because they're great for not just a icy treat, but also if you're in the car and you know that your kids uh, like to spill and those kind of things, these are really easy. You can actually uh, put a straw right through it and you're all set. For those of you that have sporting events or fiestas, these are great for your agua fresca too. Or just plain water, right? Just plain water. And I'm gonna show you what my kids are currently obsessed with. I am pretty sure it's not only my children, but this is gonna be an instant slushy. We have a frozen slushy cup, and what you do is you put this cup in the freezer overnight, and then you start squeezing the juice right here at the bottom. And just keep squishing until you get a nice, delicious slushy just like this. And this cup comes with a straw and a spoon. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. And I do have a few tips for you. One is have a lot of fun when you're making this recipe. And the other one is use one peach per one cup of water uh, when you're making this recipe. Cause I know that there's a lot of you that are just, you know, empty nesters and that's okay. You can still enjoy this drink. Just don't go too heavy on the raspberry. And if you don't have the fruit juice concentrate, not to worry, you can use a little bit of apple juice and your flavor is just gonna be spectacular. I'm lost for words because I think this is gonna be one of your guys' favorite drinks that we make this year. How do I know? Because my kids have been asking me a lot for this one. All right, friends, it's time for me to cool off because Cloud and I are closer to the sun and it gets very hot up here. Ah. That's so good. It's so smooth, it's very light, it's not overly sweet, and the best part is that you can taste the peach. So it's time for you guys to look away and get your peaches out of here. <laughs> <laughs>
And we forgot to tell our friends that, for those of you that don't know, peaches are on sale. They are in season. Yes, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for peach season. And friends, if you need a few more peach recipes, there'll be some in the description, some right here at the end. And let me know how it goes for you because if you're not eating peaches, then I don't know what you're doing. Maybe they're eating apricots. <laughs> okay, I forgive you, I forgive you. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank you for all of your comments over the weekend. Cloud and I got a lot of laughs. And you guys, some of you made me cry because you're so sweet. And Aww. you guys know I get emotional. So thank you guys for taking the time. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to transform three easy salads to beat the heat stay healthy, or as a side dish. Let us know what you think in the comments. Now let's get started by making a classic dressing. You wanna start off with some minced anchovies. And I know some of you that haven't had anchovies are like, ugh, fishy. No, it's, it's more of a salty and it doesn't have so much of the fishy scent or flavor. I was going to ask. You were? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna be adding two egg yolks. But you can't taste the anchovies that much in the dressing that you make. No, you can't taste it. I'm gonna add my garlic. And today I'm using fancy salt. It's called Malden Seasoned Salt. I love it. If you guys see this, uh, purchase it. It is perfect. Ideally, you wanna use Dijon mustard, but since I have Cloud recording today, I am gonna impress her by using some grainy mustard. I'm impressed. Nay, I know you're watching. I know you like that too, girl. So good. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. And if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I don't think anybody knows how to say it. Black pepper and some lemon juice. And start mixing. Next, you wanna add your olive oil and you wanna have some strength while you're mixing. And add it gradually. Claude, what's your favorite type of oil? Oh boy, that's, that's tricky. Um, it's gonna be avocado oil and uh, olive oil. Sorry, I can't choose, but those two. Those two? Let us know in the comments what your favorite uh, oil is. Mine is Mame because it works to moisturize your skin. I thought you meant for cooking. I didn't mean for your body. I meant any kind of oil. No, then that case, sesame seed. I'm surprised you didn't say coconut oil. She no, can't decide. It's appropriate. <laughs> Once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and add half of the portion of your Parmesan cheese. Oh my goodness. Look at how beautiful that crumble is. So delicious. That's why you want to go light on your salt because this cheese is going to give you the saltiness that we all love. Next, you want to add your cooked pasta and today I'm using rotini. Make sure it's cold. You do not want to throw hot pasta in here. It's going to taste more like a soup. You don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you might. <laughs> Combine your ingredients. Que romantica esta ensaladita, It's beautiful. And what I said to Cloud, I said, this little salad's looking very romantic. You're like, how? <laughs> That's gross. You're feeling romantic right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Add your romaine lettuce. Sprinkle the remaining Parmesan cheese. Combine one more time. I can't resist. I'm going to have to taste this right now. And when you serve this dish, you can add a few little croutons right on the outer parts. I'm going to need someone very special to say, ah. For our bacon and blue cheese salad, you're going to need blue cheese and pre-cooked bacon, juicy tomatoes. And if you don't like tomatoes, you can use a red bell pepper. Add your cubed cucumbers, thinly sliced purple onion. And you know, if you don't have purple onion, make it comfortable for your home. Cilantro, candied walnuts. I'm gonna be squeezing half a key lime in here. And some ranch. And now just toss your salad and combine all those ingredients. I like to use butter lettuce right at the edge of my plate. And then you can add your mixture of your salad so that you can have quick and easy lettuce wraps. And boom, done amigos. We have a delicious blue cheese bacon salad. I have stacks friends and these stacks well, this stack is called a leafy green lettuce stack, mm -hmm. okay? So just give it a quick chop. Boom, 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 and let me hear you say, ayo, ayo. 
place it in your bowl. These recipes can be doubled or tripled, right, for the week? They sure can. This is my go-to salad, the one that you guys keep asking me for on Instagram. This is my favorite salad, and I eat this three times out of the week. If not more. Hey, nobody needs to know this right now, okay? Hey, I benefit from it, too. <laughs> Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you guys can actually, if you guys were our neighbors, you can see me walking over to Cloud and taking her a salad like at 6 p.m. Hey, you want a salad? And I always say yes. I'm, I'm grateful. Add your cucumbers. And you know I'm a fan of cucumbers, so I add a lot. Cilantro. Raisins. And if you don't like raisins, you can use craisins, currants. Pumpkin seeds have a lot of benefits for your body. You need to be eating these often. I don't even want to say it because I'm going to scare you guys and I don't want to do that. I always tend to do that. So go ahead and sprinkle some pumpkin seeds. Sunflower seeds. For anybody that eats food, this is a must in your pantry. The amount of vitamins that are in here are essential. And look at that. A lot of B vitamins, zinc, just about everything that you need. Minus A, I think. And we said, which one was the other one? Uh, D, I believe. And D. Does it have vitamin D? I think A and D is what is missing. It might be, but mm -hmm. no, we have vitamin D. Oh, nice. We're all set. Vitamin this, C? Uh, vitamin C. Let's see, guys. Yep. Nice. So we is have, this vitamin A? We have B, um, magnesium, and you guys need that. You said that you would take this with you if you only have one item to take from your from your pantry? Yeah, if I was on a deserted island and they told me you can only take a few things, this would be one of them. I said the Views chili oil. <laughs> I'm going to season my coconut with it, the fish. You're my wild. Man. Just You're wild. <laughs> but let me show you how I like to layer this, okay? This is how I like to layer it because a nutritional yeast will stick to it and it just combines differently. Now, if I were to mix a nutritional yeast in here, it just tastes different. I don't know. My, my taste buds know. <laughs> so go ahead and add your ranch. And don't go over uh, two tablespoons max, okay? Per person. Obviously, you can use a little bit less, but two seems to work for me. Squeeze your key lime in here, your citrus, and then we're gonna make it rain nutritional yeast. Yummy. I know that's a lot, but I love it. I'd rather have healthy calories than the times when I just sit there and eat a whole bag of chips, but you guys don't wanna hear that. <laughs> and boom, done with the salad, but I'm gonna show you how I love to pair this salad. Set your pan on a medium heat and add enough oil to coat the bottom of your pan. And all I did to our salmon is sprinkle some salt. And I am using that uh, Meldon sea salt flakes. So lovely. Go ahead and place skin side down. Woo! My favorite kind of fish is salmon. Currently, that's all I wanna eat, salmon girl. I'm gonna cook the skin side two minutes and then I'm gonna turn it over and cook the top part for about a minute and that should be just enough time to get everything cooked thoroughly and we still keep that nice delicious juicy flavor that we love from salmon and you can see this fish is already asking us cook halfway to turn it over and boom done amigos we are all set Ah. Mm -mm -mm. This is my current favorite thing to eat right now. Why? It's super easy to make. The salmon gets done in just a few moments. Okay. And it's lightly seasoned. You really just need a little bit of salt, if that. I always and like to test you even though I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's healthy for you. This is a really healthy salad to have. We get asked a lot about our skin. We eat a lot of greens. Cloud has me eating a lot of salmon and using avocado oil. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I love to eat this salad uh, late at night. I know you shouldn't eat it late at night, but if you do eat a salad, and the reason I like this salad is because it takes me about 
20 to 30 minutes to eat and I'm texting with my friends or with you guys on IG and um, or when I'm gaming in between gaming I get to take a bite so it's just a really um, fun salad to eat. And I'm Cloud9 if you guys want to find me in my for my gaming. Cloud9? Yes. Mm. Add me on. Are you gonna put the link in the description? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a refreshing cucumber salsa. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how to transform the salsa for your tacos. You'll need three cucumbers, one purple onion, four tomatillos, the juice of three key limes, one serrano, five chiltepines, or you can use three chiles de arbol, one fourth cup of water, half a bunch of cilantro, half a tablespoon of salt, and I highly recommend you have this salsa with your Doritos. Let's start by peeling our cucumber and chopping them into smaller pieces. And you wanna make sure that you're chopping your cucumbers into small little bits. You don't want a chunky cucumber, okay? It's not that kind of salsa today. You wanna make sure you're slicing your onion very thin and you're gonna chop it into small, tiny little bits. You're gonna take two of your tomatillos and you're gonna slice them into smaller little bits. The other two will be going into the blender and I'll show you what to do in just a moment. And for those of you that don't have access to tomatillo at the moment, you can use tomatoes. But when you get a chance to get tomatillos, go ahead and use that. You can even use the ones in a can. Perfect for this recipe. Go ahead and place all those ingredients. So what we have in the bowl, we have our cucumbers, two tomatillos, and one medium onion, uh, chopped really fine, just like you've used club. And just place it in here. If you don't have purple onion, that's okay. You can use whatever onion you have on hand, but I definitely suggest the purple one because it really enhances the flavor of this recipe. Take your tomatillos and add them to the blender. Your serrano, if you don't want to handle the spice of the serrano, which this one, based on the curve, is pretty much going to come for you. Uh, you can use your jalapeno. Add your water. You can use your desired amount of chiltepines or chiles de arbol. Your cilantro. And I'm using a lot because I think it just tastes great with this recipe. It's really going to be up to you. I'm using the juice of three key limes, so if you're using the big uh, limes, you can use one or two. And for your lemon, just use one your salt and make sure to be very careful with the way that you're using your salt you might want to add uh, one full teaspoon and then taste it and adjust because sometimes if you go really heavy with your salt uh, it's going to get way too salty but especially with this recipe and as far as the pepper goes it does enhance the spice and the flavor so if you don't like spice do not use pepper in this particular recipe and now you want to blend until smooth that'll be about 30 to 40 seconds And boom, done. And pour your blended ingredients right on in. Just make sure you combine your ingredients well. This also tastes best fresh or the next day. Hey, I'm not playing. It even tastes good the third day. <laughs> it's so good. It's so refreshing. And now it's time for a taste. And the beautiful thing about this salsa is that you can have as much as you want. Super light, super refreshing. And I do recommend that you have this salsa with Doritos. You can have it with any kind of chips, yes, but when you have it with Doritos, you're gonna know what I'm talking about and please come back and let me know what you think. I doubted you for a second until I had it with Doritos. Well, Cloud, if there's something about snacking, it's your sister's gonna figure it out, okay? <laughs> I, I get my wolfing hour where I have to munch and this is pretty light for me. And I love cucumbers. This is a win. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Now, for those of you that would like to transform this salsa for your tacos, you're gonna need some corn. You can roast your corn, you can use frozen corn, canned corn, it doesn't matter. Just get a hold of some corn. And then you just wanna add your corn into your salsa. Give that a good mix, and I'm gonna show you how to assemble a delicious taco. There's something about a natural green that just makes you feel so healthy when you're eating it, right? 
At least for me, that's the way that's I feel. That's my favorite color, so I like to see it on my plate. Really? I've grown very fond of green here in Colorado, and I, I love it. I don't know. I might be joining you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful for a potluck, for your fiestas, for your church potluck competitions. Ooh, you know who I'm talking to. Yeah, <laughs> you guys have been winning. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. Let me know how far you got in your contest. You can take a corn or a flour tortilla and you're gonna place your carne asada right on top of there, okay? Which yeah. carne asada recipe is this one? This is a carne asada marinade that I meal prepped for us. Oh, the one this from this weekend? Yeah. So this juicy. is all the rave, this carne asada this weekend. It, it rained, so it took me a few days to get to it. I know I left you hanging the last night. It's okay, it's okay. I, I got it done. Next, you're gonna place your salsa. Sprinkle some cotija cheese. And boom, done. This taco right here is absolutely delicious and I hope you guys try it and that you love it. Please come back and let us know. I'm so excited for this recipe. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh... Really, you wanna say hi to our friends? Hello. He's usually saying hi on Instagram, making tortillas with mom, but. He does. You like that? Me too. I love this one. Here you go. Do you like it best in the tacos or with chips? With the tacos? Well, I get my munchie now already. I like it. I like it with the chips and the tacos. I can't pick. I don't know. They're both great. You can use them for your tostadas. You can even eat this uh, with a little bit of white rice. It's perfect on everything. That's right. It's so mm. good. Mm. That's so amazing. You having a good summer, baby? Mm -hmm. You? So far, so good. What about you, mom? Mm hmm. I've been cooking a lot. <laughs> you have. Every time I call, I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm meal prepping, I'm cooking. I remember those days. What did we fun. make, what did we make this weekend, baby? Mm -hmm. A lot of things. <laughs> no, we didn't stop. <laughs> And he loves being in the kitchen too, that's so adorable. Uh, both of the boys love to cook, so it's yeah. awesome. But uh, for those of you that don't like tomatillo, um, go ahead and blend it all and place it in here, but it gives it an extra little bite. Mm. Do you like tomatillo, sweetie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> looks like Are I caught you, you guys. Sorry, mm -hmm. looks like, it looks like I caught you guys during your snacking hour. <laughs> this whole bowl will be gone, and I might fill up another one. So if you have the kids that are hungry, that are wanting to munch, this is a perfect recipe for that. Cucumbers are really good for your skin and for your digestion. Mm. My goodness, God child, I didn't say buen provecho. Hope you enjoy your food. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. We'll see you guys tomorrow for another refreshing one. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make ground beef carne asada hamburgers and stick around to the end because I'm going to share a few tips with you. To a large bowl, you're going to add a splash of beer, one tablespoon of soy sauce, two finely chopped garlic cloves, a small bunch of cilantro, the juice of one lime, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano. Per pound, you wanna add one tablespoon of cornstarch as a binder. If you don't have cornstarch, you can also use an egg yolk or you can use two tablespoons of ground oatmeal. And if you don't have anything else, it's fine. You can use all-purpose flour. And now you just wanna combine all your ingredients. Once you're done combining your ingredients, you're gonna add two pounds of ground beef and you're gonna gently mix all your ingredients. Make sure not to get too aggressive when you're combining your ingredients. We don't wanna over mix our ground beef. We just wanna incorporate all of our seasonings into our beef, okay? So don't overdo it. We're not making tortillas today. Be very, very gentle. And your last seasoning for your carne asada hamburgers should be your salt. One more quick mix. And now we can start assembling our patties.
So once you assemble your patty, you're going to notice that when you're using uh, store-bought ground beef, you end up having these little crevices. So just pinch a little bit and mold, okay? Super easy. That way it doesn't crack on you. And you want to make them as thick or as thin as you would like. You also want to make them a, large, a little bit larger than your buns because they do ten, tend to shrink a bit. So if you want to fit this perfectly on your bun, you do have to make them a little bit wider, okay? Be gentle. It's just a gentle touch when you're messing around with your ground beef. Uh, and I'm gonna continue making the rest of our patties. The piece that we made down there is more of a double-double. That is for the hearty eaters, okay? So if you're not a hearty eater, you can definitely make these a lot thinner. Ooh, I almost forgot to tell you guys one thing. Leave it to me to forget, but you know, just in time. You wanna put your thumb through it, but since I have nails, that's not gonna to look too good. So go ahead, get your knuckle, press it right down in the middle, and that way you don't get that raised part for your burger. You know what I'm talking about? Wait, what? I never knew that. Really? No, definitely <laughs> not. No, no, I was at my tío's carne asada and he never did that. But you're the fancy one of the family, so I pay attention to you. Oh, hush, hush, hush. So yeah, that's all you wanna do, so when it cooks up, It'll allow for you to um, have a delicious flat patty instead of like the little spaceship. Yeah. The dome? <laughs> yeah. See? Like even here, I got a little crack. Just pinch it. Pinch it and you're going to be all set. Remember, you guys are not production machines. These are homemade burgers and those are the best burgers to have. To assemble your delicious hamburger, you'll need hamburger buns, mayonnaise, guacamole, pico de gallo, red radishes, iceberg lettuce, and your choice of melty cheese. I personally love the way radishes taste with your guacamole. So go ahead and place your radishes with your guacamole. There will be no mom complaining that there isn't enough vegetables here today, okay? The mom's like, I don't want the vegetable today. <laughs> and boom done, who's ready for a bite? Before I take a delicious bite with you, I wanna let you guys know that this ground beef can be used and topped over any kind of protein. You can use it for your tostadas, your tacos, over rice, baked potato, you name it. It's pretty uh, versatile. As far as a flavor goes, you're gonna get an authentic taste to carne asada. And I think, you know, you're gonna be really happier because a lot of you have been saying that you're on a budget and this is budget friendly. And when it gets this dangerous, you should start looking away. Mm. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a California street food fruit cup. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make your own fruit cup, your chili paste to go with it, saving you and I a lot of money. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need watermelon, pineapple, melon, cucumbers, mangos, jicama, oranges. For your chili paste, you're gonna need key limes, 
Valentina hot sauce, tajin, some forritos chilito or miguelito. Salt and your choice of chili powder. Let's start off by peeling our cucumbers. Oh, you're committing an actual sin against the culture right now. Ah, I thought you guys would have noticed. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I almost called the elders. <laughs> don't do that. You don't want to do that. Cucumbers are my weakness. We're refreshing just like the Views Club. Ooh, Views Club. Your Tia Cloud gave you a compliment today. Right Someone, someone's happy with you. It's been a year. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this one's gonna be a juicy one. Make sure you give your sweetheart the heart of the watermelon. Well, thank you so much for that. Mmm. Did you pick this watermelon? I sure did. It did wonderful. While well, you were sneaking over there socializing. You know how it is. Mmm. Oi, oi. And we're going to continue to prep our delicious fruit. Mmm. That's so juicy. It may not be the heart, but the butts equally is good. It's so good and it's so sweet. I believe this watermelon I purchased is a chewy watermelon. But if you guys get a hold of the Yosemite watermelons, ooh, those are perfect. If you want to find real big mangoes, you have to go to your Mexican market. It's bigger than my hand. Wow. Hello to our friends at Mi Pueblo here in Denver. Saludos amigos in Commerce City. We I love you guys so them. much. Saludos a Ruben in the meat market. He'll hook you up guys <laughs> with the good stuff. And what do I mean by good stuff? Some chilorio from Sinaloa. The good bones. Yep, the good uh, beef bone, the all that. The best cuts of meat. The, all that goody goody stuff. Mm -hmm. It gets goody good at butchers. No? No. I mean, 40 year olds don't watch Stranger Things, do they? Um, You're I, hip. Yeah. I guess I'm chill. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding, guys. We know 40-year-olds are alive and well and young. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. We watched uh, Stranger Things over the weekend, the boys and I. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, those teenager kids had me crying. In the Aww. show, I really got into it, you guys. You know, I'm emotional. And I really enjoyed this season. But I'm not going to spoil it for those that haven't seen it. Example me. But I'm going to watch it before I uh, cancel my membership. I'm going to be canceling my membership too because this whole thing of raising the prices uh, during certain times, it's not good for a company. I agree. So they didn't have to be rude to us. Unless you guys want to share your login with me. Then. <laughs> Let us know. Send us an email. Send us an email. <laughs> and you guys are going to be shocked at what we watch. You guys will get bored quick. Yep. You're going to go straight into nap time when you see our viewing pleasure. And we hope you have a blessed night. <laughs> we do. <laughs> They're gonna be like, well, Cloud watch an entire season of VeggieTales. <laughs> I sure did. She sure does. <laughs> and all I'm doing is prepping our food. I, if you notice, I'm not slicing our food until it's time to serve. Unless you're meal prepping, then obviously you can just chop it up and, um, and get your containers to go. But when you're serving these fresh like this for your family and have them wait, okay? Have them wait in line while you're uh, prepping your fruit and you're ready to serve breakfast, lunch, or dinner because that's exactly what this is nature's candy. These mangoes are so heavy that peeling them right here, I'm like out of breath. So this is not <laughs> toxic candy, this is good candy. This is a good candy. The kids told me that we went viral on a on a candy episode on YouTube. It oh like, really? Which, uh, it has like 4 million views or something. Which, which uh, channel? I'll, I'll link it in the description. Okay, somewhere. it'll be in the description and hopefully Cloud can pin it or something for you guys. Oh, I'm excited to, to see that. <laughs> Why did you tell me before? I had slipped my mind until you said candy. You naughty girl. <laughs> Listos. En sus marcas. Fuera! Remember when you're gonna eat your orange to leave some of this uh, little white stuff there because that's gonna help you process your vitamin C. Oh, well, I didn't know that. You know who I learned that from? Mm -hmm. uh, Rafa and Christina. Oh, nice. Such an angel. I love her. I love her too. She's a sweetie. And boom, done. Oh, I love jicama. It smells so fresh. And once you start eating jicama, you'll notice like within a week, if you eat it every day, you'll notice a change in your face and in your skin. That's right. It's kind of like watermelon, it has a lot of water. For our chili sauce, we're gonna start off using equal amounts of chamoy and your favorite hot sauce. We're gonna be using one to two tablespoons of tahin, it's really gonna be up to you. One teaspoon of salt, 
and one fourth of a cup of your favorite chili powder. Today I have guajillo and a little bit of chile de arbol. The juice of two key limes, optional but not necessary, some sugar. And just keep mixing until all your ingredients are well combined. Oh, my mouth is watering. That smells so good. <laughs> Ooh, so good, so good. And if you don't want to go through all the sauce making, that's okay. You can just buy this bottle. It's very similar and tastes great. Putting the watermelon on the top is going to entice the kids to get to the bottom. <laughs> And now I'm gonna show you the naughtiest, most delicious way that you can prepare this. Start with a little sprinkle of tajin, and then we're gonna use, you know it, la marroca. And these are a chili-based tamarind chamoy-ish candy that just pairs well with this delicious fruit cup. Drizzle your chili sauce, your lime juice, a little more tajin on the top, and boom done, who's ready for a taste? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, <laughs> what you know is gonna do that? <laughs> there you go, enjoy, frutita time. Thank you. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner for us. Where, you're leaving me? You don't wanna say anything to our friends? You know it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Bye, baby. And the wonderful thing about this recipe is that you can use any fruit that you want. Cloud and I needed some coconut, but she forgot it at home. <laughs> Not <laughs> again, don't throw me under the bus. That's the second time I forget an ingredient at home. Yeah, uh, coconut tastes really good in here. So let us know your favorite fruit combos. And remember, you don't always have to cook something to make breakfast, lunch, or dinner. That's how I feel about fruit. It's nature's candy, and you can have this for breakfast even with the chamoy. Mm. What's your favorite fruit in here, Cloud? The coconut? Just kidding. <laughs> mango. The mango? Okay. And That's watermelon. Right. This one's for you. Thank you. Mmm. The chili sauce is perfect on here. It's sweet, tangy, and delicious with a little bit of a kick. So if you guys decide to make your own fruit cups at home, make sure to tag us on our social media. And we hope you're enjoying your summer as much as we are. Stay cool. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most refreshing tres leches drink. And if you love our tres leches cake, you're going to love this recipe. You'll need one cup of milk, four cups of water, one can of evaporated milk, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one can of lechera, or you can use half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of Mexican vanilla blend, half a tablespoon of cinnamon, your desired amount of strawberries, or you can use some peaches. And of course, to keep it fresh, get a lot of ice. And to enhance the experience while you're drinking this delicious, refreshing drink, I suggest you chop your strawberries and your peaches into smaller pieces. Add four cups of water, one cup of milk, and you can use soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, your horchata, rice milk, you name it. You can add it to this recipe and it's gonna be equally as delicious half a cup of heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay, you can use half and half. And if you're gonna use this recipe for your bolis, your ice treats, make sure to use one cup of heavy whipping cream. Evaporated milk, your other tia lechera. And if you don't have condensed milk, you can use sugar. It's gonna be up to you. I just love the way that it tastes with some lechera. Vanilla, and I'm using Mexican vanilla blend because it's tradition. It's a staple in our home. <laughs> Cinnamon. And now you're gonna mix for a good 30 seconds to a minute until you fully combine all your ingredients. Ooh, that smells so good. <laughs> que rico. You have all been doing such a wonderful job learning to love yourself. And you know, when you love yourself, you can see it in your kids, right? So I can see it, friends. You're doing a great job and this drink is gonna send you straight to the clouds. Because you know who loves you in the clouds? Your tia Cloud. <laughs> Guess I'll see you there. And you know who's next to Cloud? Me. So we'll see you guys there. You little ray of sunshine. <laughs> Once you're done combining your ingredients, you want to taste 
your drink, okay? So some of you might like it sweeter and some of you might say that's exactly what I need. And for me, I'm gonna use some of this to freeze for boli. So, you know, I'm gonna impress the kids today. They've been good. They're gonna get a little sugar. Whoa, cheers. <laughs> Take me down to the paradise city. Cause the grass is green and your mom is pretty. Oh. Won't you take me home? And it's a home run, amigos. I'm so excited for you guys to try this recipe. It's absolutely delicious and perfect for this hot season and for the holidays and for your birthdays. <laughs> And this one is for my sweet little, little angel. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, wow, you're really smiling big today. Cheers, Abe. Salud. Provecho. Salud. You don't trust me? No, I'm from Sonora. Mijo, that's when you don't trust somebody and you're from Sonora, good Lord. You trust mommy. Don't skip out on adding a lot of strawberries. It really enhances the flavor of this drink. Bebe, what do you think? Can't read it. You can't read it? Why? I want you to. It's too good. It's too good? <laughs> All right, you can't read it, it's that good. You know what I call that? Mm. Absolutely delicious. Is it from here to the moon, Bebe, good? Longer. <gasps> oh my goodness. I thought the peach drink was gonna be the 2022 like fresh drink that we all love. I don't know. It's going to be a tie between this one and the peach drink. So it's going to be up to you guys. Let us know in the comments. And if you do like this recipe and you're a silent viewer, give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you very, very soon with another delicious recipe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Why did I sound so rehearsed? I got really excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Otra salud. Salud. Oh, you're almost Ooh. done. That's good. It's going to keep you full for a few hours. That's what you think. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Views Kitchen. On today's recipe, we're gonna be making baked chicken with a creamy poblano sauce. Now let's go over the ingredients. The star of the show, some poblano peppers. Sometimes you find them at your store as pasilla and some stores have them as chilaca. But if you see a pepper that looks green just like this, that's the pepper you wanna choose. Pre-cooked and shredded chicken, heavy cream, mozzarella cheese, cotija cheese, finely chopped onion, and finely chopped garlic. A bunch of cilantro. Don't get scared, friends. I counted each stem just for you, and it's listed in the description area. Butter, chicken bouillon, black pepper, corn tortillas, and some pre-cooked rice. We're gonna roast our peppers until they're completely charred, and that should take us about eight minutes. One of our Views Club friends suggested that before roasting, we remove our stem, so we're gonna give it a go. After four minutes, you're gonna see that they're nice and roasted, and we're gonna flip. They're not just nice and roasted, it smells so divine in here. There's like a floral scent, right? Val's just nodding over here, guys. She's still drinking some coffee. How's your coffee, honey? It's great. <laughs> it's an iced cold brew nitro. Ooh, you want me to show? I don't give away my secret. She doesn't want to give the secrets away, apparently, friends. That's what I'm drinking, and it's oh so good. You guys want to know how many calories are in here? I know some of you are watching yourself, and I this one. I don't watch that. You stuff. don't, but I know our friends do. Only 70 for the can, and if you're gonna get a treat, I I actually really like this one too. 
Good call, Cloud. Make sure you recycle your can, and uh, when those times when you can't make it at home, you can pick one of these up. Yep. After about eight, nine minutes, we have nice, beautifully roasted peppers. And I'm just gonna place them in a paper bag today. No, I'm not gonna go trick-or-treating yet, friends. <laughs> and I'm gonna let them start steaming in there for about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna seal the bag, and then we're gonna peel them. Now you can just peel your pepper. And if you guys like to take your time and do this to peel, go ahead. I'm not opposed to rinsing it, getting all of this off in the water. The flavor is still there. Yeah, the flavor is still there and it's really up to you and how much time you have. If you have the time to take uh, to peel each and every one of your peppers, go ahead and do that. Once you're done peeling your pepper, slice it down the middle and remove all the seeds. Okay. Do you see this little orangey red part? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to find it that sometimes through the veins of the chili, you're going to get those orangey spots. Those are the ones that are hot fire. So be careful when you see those and don't rub your eyes. While you're peeling your pepper and you're taking the seeds out, if you start coughing because it's spicy, then that means you're probably not going to want that. But if you want the spice, you're going to love that pepper. Don't toss that pepper away. Just freeze it. And then whenever you're making a hot salsa, you can use that for your roasted salsa. But other than that, you should be good to go. Add your water, your poblanos. your cilantro, and we're gonna blend till smooth. You want the consistency to be a smooth puree. If you have a blender that doesn't puree, just like this, you're gonna have to run it through a strainer, okay? Pans on a medium heat, and I added a little bit of oil, and we're just gonna saute our onions and our garlic. We're gonna continue to cook our onions and our garlic until they're nice and soft, so that should be about three minutes or so. After three minutes, you're gonna add your butter. And we just want it to get nice and melted before we add our cream. Warm up a corn tortilla. Place this little combination we have here and boom, done. <laughs> so good. <laughs> a quick onion taco. A quick onion taco, yummy. Okay, once your butter melts, you're going to add your heavy cream. And that's a good heavy cream if you're able to get the creme de la creme right here. Yummy. Add that to your taco. Add your chili blend. Add your chicken bouillon, your 
black pepper. We're gonna continue to cook our sauce on a medium low heat for five minutes. After about five, six minutes, you're gonna turn your burner off and you're gonna add your cotija cheese. If you don't have cotija cheese, you can use Parmesan for this. Just make sure it's nice and fine, just like you, Views Club. Oh yeah. Stir it in. Before we add our shredded chicken to our sauce, make sure to keep two cups to the side. Add your shredded chicken. That right there smells so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. If you're excited, let us know in the comments. Woo! Now we're just gonna set this pan to the side so we can begin layering. Slice your tortillas. Not all of them, just a few. your sauce, and then you're gonna add your tortillas. A little more sauce over the top. The tortillas I'm using today are really strong. I didn't need to fry them, but if you have some of the tortillas that are softer, for example, the Guerrero, I would definitely suggest you frying them a few seconds like we do for enchiladas before placing them in here. Sprinkle your layer of rice. Press it down and just fill the little gaps with some more rice. Who wanted that sauce? Me, I'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you're gonna sprinkle some cheese. You can also use queso manchego, queso Oaxaca or any wonderful melty cheese you have will work. Now I'm gonna redo the same layering one more time. And then just add the remaining of your sauce to the top. Smooth it out. Hold on guys, if you hear Boo Boo, we gotta let him in. <laughs> That's his call. We and this is optional. I have a roasted pepper that I thinly sliced and I'm just gonna sprinkle them over the top. And boom, almost done. Now it's time to bake. Make sure you wait about 10 minutes before you dig in, okay friends? Then why did we only wait eight minutes? Because, Cloud, I can handle this. <laughs> Ooh, yes. And I do want a big piece. Yeah. 
You ready for a taste? Say ah. Careful because it is hot. That is so good. That is so, 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 so good. Friends, if you've ever had camarones culichis, we have a recipe here on the channel. This tastes like everything you have from culichis with the rice, but with chicken. So this recipe works well with chicken and shrimp. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make red Mexican street corn and by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to balance your spice levels, make your red sauce and plate it three different ways. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need 12 to 16 ears of corn, two and a half pounds of beef bone, seven guajillo chiles, one tablespoon of salt, four tablespoons of butter, one bay leaf, seven cups of water, and for your toppings you'll need mayonnaise, chamoy, valentina hot sauce, tajin, cotija cheese, limes, and a little butter. Remove the stems and the seeds from your chilies and place them into a bowl of hot water. And you're gonna allow them to set for about eight to 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. And while our chiles are getting nice and soft for us, we're gonna start with our corn. Now that we have our desired amount of corn kernels, I would love to go over the different types of chilies that you can use to balance your spice level for this recipe. Let's start off with our chile chiltepin. And chiltepines are from Sonora area, and you can distinguish them because they're round and they had a little bit of a rattle to them. Next, you have your chiles de árbol, which are very, very long and thin. And don't get confused with it. It's not as spicy as your chiltepin, but it definitely adds a real big kick. Here we have chiles pequín. And you're going to recognize these because they have a more oval shape and they're less spicier than the other chiles that we have here. You might be asking yourself, okay, Steph, which one am I going to choose? For us, we like a little bit of a smoky flavor. So we're going to use a few of our chiltepines and combine it with one chile de árbol because the spice with these blended together works really well for our family. But for those of you that don't want to mess with any of these chiles, you can use your chipotle chili pod, a jalapeño, or a serrano. It's going to really be up to you to make it comfortable for your home. Ooh, what song is that? That's 90s. Oh, no, 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 finally, it has happened to me. Let us in the comments. <laughs> That's how I feel about this corn. It's going to be so delicious. I'm so excited. Okay, friends, to your blender, you want to add a big spoon of your corn. Add your chiles. Add about four cups of water. Your choice of spice level. Bay leaf. Salt. And next, you're going to blend until smooth. And boom, done. Add your blended chilies to your Instant Pot. Add your corn. Dile que no, que no se espere. <laughs> your beef bone, butter. And you wanna make sure that you're covering all of your ingredients with your amount of water. The total amount of water that I'm using for a large Instant Pot is seven cups of water. Give that a good mix. But the corn is delicious. Fresh. Yeah, fresh corn. It just smells so good. Once you combine your ingredients, you're gonna add your epazote. And if you don't have epazote, that's okay. It's still gonna be really delicious. And for those of you that don't want corn in a cup, you're gonna place your corn right on in. Since I'm using small beef bones, I'm gonna pressure cook for 35 minutes on high, but if you have larger uh, beef bones, you wanna go with 45 minutes and a slow pressure release. For your chili sauce, you're gonna use equal amounts of chamoy and Valentina hot sauce. Now, if you wanna change it up with a different hot sauce, you can. And you wanna squeeze the juice of one to two key limes 
and adjust the tartness to taste. You can also add a little bit of tahini. And if you don't want to do all that, you can just buy this sauce right here and save yourself some time. And if you like a little sweetness in your sauce, you can use some Miguelito or some Forritos Chilito. And boom, done. We're ready to enjoy our delicious corn. If you have a person that loves tendon, you're gonna wanna pour it right on in, okay? For example, Cloud, she likes it. So we're gonna bring it in, because then later she can eat the tendon. Yummy. You excited? With the corn tortilla. Your eyes are glowing. <laughs> And boom, done. Who's ready for a taste? And if you want to take some over to your family all ready and to snack, you guys can just wrap it up. And I use these ice cream containers and they help me a lot with meal prep with my boys, whether it be a scrambled egg breakfast and it's easy to microwave, or we can just place some of our corn cocktail right on in. And then you just freeze it like that in the cup? Wait till it cools completely and then you just freeze it. Oh, okay, got it. Take it out, microwave it a good two to three minutes and then they can put all their favorite toppings. And my kids aren't gonna chew on that epazote, so you wanna take that out. Put a lid on it, and boom, done. And for those of you that have gamers at home, sports fan, this way of presenting it to your family, they're gonna love you even more than they already do. How do I know? Because my son loves soccer, and when I make anything on this little skillet, he looks at me with those hungry eyes, but they love me eyes, you know? Aww. Once you've warmed up your skillet, you're gonna add your cheese. Today I'm using asadero, and I'm adding the cheese to the bottom because we like that crispiness, you know? Just an extra touch. You can use tocito salsa verde or your regular corn chips for this recipe. Add some delicious nacho cheese. your corn some more asadero cheese cotija the chili sauce tahin and some lime and you're ready to serve your gamer. And there's nothing more to say other than have a lot of fun when you're making this because Mexican street corn is the absolute best. Buen provechito. Mmm. I'm a little scared to bite into this chino. Don't do it. I was coughing up a storm earlier, but for you guys I am. Mm. And you stuffed that one with cheese? Mm-hmm. Ooh, delicious. Mmm. Oh, wow. It's time for you guys to look away because I love corn and it's gonna get dangerous. Like really dangerous. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you a recipe that's over a hundred years old. For this recipe, you're gonna need four cups of hot water and you're gonna need some extra hot water for your chiles. Seven guajillo chilies and two ancho chiles. Make sure to remove the stems and the seeds. And what you wanna do is you wanna add some hot water and you wanna soak them for about 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. one pound of ground pork, eight ounces of chorizo, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and your desired amount of bolillo or telera bread, two chipotle pods with adobo sauce, one teaspoon of ground clove, one teaspoon of cinnamon, 
and about four garlic cloves, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, salt to taste, thinly sliced lettuce, half of a thinly sliced onion, and avocado to taste. Take your flour and dust your bread. And what you wanna do is you wanna close your bag. And you wanna shake it so that we can coat all of our bread with the flour. And your bread should look like this. Take your softened chiles and add them to your blender. Add your water, ground cumin, thyme, Mexican oregano, garlic, cinnamon, ground clove, chipotle, and if you want it really spicy, then you can add four chipotles. And don't forget your adobo sauce. And now you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done! Place your burner on a medium heat and allow it to heat up for about two minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna go ahead and add your ground pork. Continue to cook your pork for another three to four minutes. After about four minutes, you wanna make a little well in the center of your pot and you're gonna add your chorizo. Combine all your ingredients, set your burner on a medium heat and continue to cook for another four minutes. Give or take about four to five minutes, you're gonna add your blended sauce. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook on a low heat for 15 to 18 minutes. And not to worry friends, you do not need a lid for this part. Make sure to come in periodically and stir your pot. And what you wanna do after about eight to 10 minutes is you wanna taste the sauce, okay? And the reason you wanna taste your sauce is because you wanna make sure that it's seasoned well. And depending on the chorizo that you're using, you never know. So go ahead and taste your sauce. And if you need any salt, this is the time where you would sprinkle your salt, mix it in, and continue to cook for the remaining minutes. And remember, your salt is to taste. Go light, don't go too heavy, because you can always add, but you can't take it out. Ooh, a magic potion. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. And you don't need to add chicken bouillon in here because the spices take care of all the flavoring and all that, right? This is a well seasoned dish. You do not need chicken bouillon unless you're addicted. That's a different story, and that's to taste. And you can sprinkle <laughs> it right on. You sure can. <laughs> We have a saying around here in this channel, and it is, make it comfortable for, for your, your home. home. That is correct, Cloud. And after about 18 minutes, our ingredients are fully cooked, our sauce is nice and thick, and now we can start preparing our pambaso. Take your lettuce and add it to the bottom of your pambaso. Next, you're gonna add your desired amount of onions, your thinly sliced avocado. And for this version, you don't need the cheese, right? You do not need the cheese. You have enough fat from your avocado. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yummy. And next, you're gonna pour your filling right over the top. And next, you're gonna take the top of your bread, you're gonna dip it into your sauce, and you're gonna place the hat. And boom, done, amigos, who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Amigos, regardless of what recipe you choose to make, it's gonna be sloppy, so just enjoy it, okay? There, it's like eating tacos, it doesn't matter. Just dig in. And once I dig in, just look away after because it's gonna get dangerous. Buen provecho. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's magical. I got a little bit of chili on you. Well, when they ask me how I got my smile, it's not going to be the Dark Knight movie. <laughs> it's yep. going to be your bombasto filling. Mmm, so good.
It's so flavorful and seasoned. Friends, you're gonna love it. Mm. And this is why we cook our street foods at home because it gets dangerous. Mm. 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 You well, have well. sauce and you do look like the Joker right now and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Which are the sweet angel, a little Joker if one existed. Thank you. I, I love when you count on me anyway. <laughs> I just hit a pocket of flavor that burst in my mouth. So friends, when you guys try this recipe, please come back and let me know how you enjoyed it. And if for some reason you got a smile from this pambaso, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. I would love to repost you on our channel. Or on our page. Or both. <laughs> Chat or both, we'll put you guys here next. But yeah, this is, this is a winner for sure. Hello and welcome amigos. Happy National Burrito Day. And today I'm gonna be making you a guisado burrito. And if you don't know what a guisado is, keep watching. For today's guisado, you're gonna need one to two pounds of ground beef. And if you don't have ground beef, you can use ground chicken. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of ground cumin, your desired amount of black pepper. I'm just hoping it lands in that bowl. It did, <laughs> in that big bowl. <laughs> in that big bowl. And you can find the acrylic spice containers in our Amazon storefront. And the link is in the description area and now we're pinning it for you. So just look in the comments, it's gonna be the first one. So go ahead and add half a chopped onion. Whoa, that one wanted to shine. Your friends are here. They're here for me. Drizzle about half a tablespoon of olive oil or whatever oil you have at home and combine all your ingredients. What kind of olive oil are you using? I've never seen that bottle before. Don't tease. I ran out of our favorite olive oil and I have this one from Costco and I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, that's why you're not showing us. No, I can't. <laughs> but I'm gonna finish using it. I have a whole bottle to go. <laughs> Don't worry, Views Club, I'll sneak a peek and tell you on tomorrow's episode what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start mailing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding it. <laughs> Put duct tape on it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to infuse it with some, some birria seasonings. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> and once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and set it to the side. I pre-soaked about nine chile guajillos in hot water and you just wanna let them soak in there until they get nice and soft, or you can use the boiling method, which takes about the same amount of time. And use a little bit of this water so we can blend. You wanna add two roasted tomatoes and two roasted garlics. And for those of you that like spice in your food, you can add some chile de arbol, and that's gonna be up to you because I've been known to make really spicy salsa to the point where my family doesn't wanna to talk to me. Mm -hmm. That happened to me recently. Thanks for the warning, little girl. <laughs> you got me good. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom done, amigos. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. And then you're gonna add your ground beef. And the reason I'm using my hands to put the beef in, it's because um, it's authentic that way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're able to crumble up that meat. <laughs> yeah. You wash your hands a lot. And I'm grateful for that. I have counted one time how many times I washed my hands and it was like 25 or something, girl. Well, because you're always in the kitchen. That's right. Continue to cook your ground beef on that medium heat for another four to five minutes and just start breaking down your ground beef. Once you've fully cooked your ground beef, you're gonna go ahead and add your pre-cooked potatoes. And if you like to use a microwave, you can chop up your potatoes and cook them for eight minutes, or you can boil them for about 10 to 12 minutes. Add your blended chili sauce. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half of water to shake off all the excess chili, and we're gonna pour it right on in. One to two tablespoons of chicken bouillon, and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook until you see that your sauce is thickened up a little bit. That should be anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, amigos, we are all done here. I like my guisado a bit saucier because I like to dip my tortillas usually, but for those of you that don't want it so saucy, just use a little bit of less water and I'll leave the suggestions in the description area, but we are ready to serve and make this burrito. I'm gonna warm up our flour tortilla. If you guys need a recipe, I have a lot here on YouTube. Look up these on the road tortillas. <laughs> I try to help you differently in each one. They all have tips. To your tortilla, you wanna add your favorite beans. Today I'm using pork beans and I'll link it in the description area. Mexican rice, the star of the show. 
and I like my burritos this way with some cheddar. And boom, done, who's ready for a bite? And I'm just gonna show you another way you can plate this guisado. I'm nervous. Let's see what you say for National Burrito Day. I was going to say it's hot, but he can handle the heat. <laughs> Take your time. Take baby. your time, Take baby. Your Finish time. chewing. Mm. Steph, do you have any tips for us while he's chewing? No tips at all. This is a super easy recipe to make. And even if you haven't thought out your ground beef, you know that you can still cook it. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> The teenagers won't stress out. They don't take out their meat in time to do Yeah, don't stress out. And if you guys need help on how uh, to cook your beef when it's still frozen, let me know in the comments and then I'll make a recipe specifically for you guys. With frozen beef. With frozen beef. It's good. It's very delicious and it's, and it's good and it's spicy. Oh, you like the spice in there? Yes. Why? I didn't know it's not how burrito day. Nobody told me this. Oh, I thought you liked burritos that you would, you would know. <laughs> this was a surprise for you, sweetie. Oh, I no surprise. Okay. Thank you, Mom, and I'm out. All right. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> We're just ready for a good time. Hello and welcome. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the best Mexican garlic butter chicken. I'm gonna show you how to keep this chicken nice and juicy and how to layer your flavors so that when you bake this in the oven, the only thing that comes out is nothing but perfection. Mm -mm -mm. In this bowl, I have about four pounds of chicken. I have a mixture of chicken breast and some chicken legs. And you guys already know I can't fit everything in this bowl, but I will be doing a total of four chicken legs. So go ahead and add your ground cumin, chili powder, paprika, onion powder. Ooh, that wanted to stay. Who didn't want this onion powder to come through? I love onion powder. Was that you? That was not me. I'm currently obsessed with onion powder the same way that I'm obsessed with chicken bouillon, so watch out, you guys. <laughs> Some black pepper and a little bit of salt. Now it's time to combine our ingredients. Make sure that all your chicken is nice and coated. The wonderful part of this seasoning is that you can season it uh, the day before. Make sure that you have a nice and safe container, but you just wanna make sure that it's all properly coated, okay? And since we want this chicken to be nice and juicy, we don't wanna salt it too much. And I do this often, I always pick the smaller bowl, so we're gonna have to shake it up in the big bowl. And this uh, bowl definitely helps shake things up. The other thing that I wanted to say to you guys, if you're gonna be seasoning your chicken, just toss your seasonings in the bowl because if you itemize it kind of like I did for this particular recipe, you're gonna end up losing seasoning. And I just did that to impress you guys, just so you know. So just put it in a bowl, shake it up, and set it to the side. You wanna let your seasonings coat the chicken for a good 10 to 15 minutes, but if you guys do it overnight, it's probably for best flavor. Place your burner on a medium heat. We want our pan to get nice and hot. Drizzle some olive oil in your pan, enough to coat the bottom. Add your butter. Make sure to combine your butter well into the olive oil to prevent burning. Once your butter has melted, go ahead and add your chicken and make sure that you're placing it skin side down. We're gonna continue to cook our chicken on a medium heat for six minutes. If you see that something's way too hot, make sure to gauge your temperature and lower it just a little bit. At this moment, you do not wanna move your chicken. We wanna get a really good sear on the skin side of the chicken. After about three minutes, you wanna start flipping your chicken to make sure that we sear all of the sides. And searing your chicken on a medium heat should only take you six minutes. It's so hot cast iron pan. Now, if you're using a different kind of pan, it might take you a little bit longer. So work with what you have and make it comfortable for your home. After about six to eight minutes, you will see that your chicken is nice and seared. And some pieces might require a little bit more time than others. So you can just kind of flip it, eyeball it. Add your remaining butter. Next, you wanna add your yellow onion, your chopped Anaheim, and your chopped tomato. Mm. 
Next, I'm gonna add my garlic, and all I did was just smash them a little bit with my knife on the cutting board. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook on a medium to medium low heat for four to six minutes until everything gets nice and soft. Next, you wanna add your all-purpose flour. Combine that well. Should take you about 20 seconds to cook your flour into this buttery, delicious seasoned oil. And next, you wanna add your tomato sauce. And allow that tomato sauce to cook for a good 30 to 40 seconds. And we are still on a medium heat. You smell that? It smells so good. It smells different. Once your tomato sauce cooks, it just, it just gives you another layer of flavor. After about 45 seconds, you wanna add your chicken broth. And what I did is I used a cup of warm water and add, added one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. That's a little brighter. Is that the natural one? That one is the natural one, yes. And while you're mixing, you wanna add your half and half. Now, for those of you that wanted extra creamy, use half a cup of half and half and half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Combine all your ingredients with all the love that you want your family and loved ones to feel while you're gonna feed them this delicious creamy chicken. I just have one song that comes to mind when you say that. What? Can you feel the love tonight? Oh, you're gonna feel the love. <laughs> I even left the garlics nice and whole for you because I know you're the garlic lover I know in you this did. family. I appreciate you. I love garlic. <laughs> so combine all your ingredients and continue to cook for about two minutes, okay? My burner is currently on a medium low heat because I don't want this to splash everywhere on you guys, but I also want this to start cooking gently. We're letting our, our flavors know, hey, we're gonna slow it down. This is a slow dance. We wanna brighten up the flavors in the chicken. We don't want this to be fully blasted because this is a dish that you make for those that you love. After two minutes, you wanna add your Mexican oregano. And what I love about using Mexican oregano in this dish is that a lot of these type of dishes use a white cooking wine, some little vinegary, tart, acidic flavor, and the acidity you get from the Mexican oregano was just perfect. Oh, okay, that's a good one to know. And you know what we have here? A bay leaf, so go ahead and add your bay leaf. Turn off your burner. Give that a good mix. I mean, you can even just pour this over some rice and be ready. Or over some potatoes. I've been over potatoes lately. Oh, you want some potatoes. Okay, she should have never said that I got something for you guys. I mean, I'm not over them. I'm putting things over them. Oh, <laughs> I see what you're doing. Okay, okay. So before we uh, do anything else, I want you to taste your broth. Okay? That hot spoon for me. That hot spoon is for you. Hot metal spoon. Here we go. Oh, that's perfect. It doesn't need anything. Ooh, la perfecta. <laughs> and this is where you want to taste the levels of salt in your dish. So if you're going to be adding a little bit more salt, go ahead and add your salt or your chicken bouillon. Mix your ingredients and cook it for a minimum of two minutes on a low heat and then taste the salt content of it. Now it's time to place our pieces of chicken into our pot. You want to place your pieces of chicken skin side up. So give that a quick little bath with our sauce. I'm thinking I would want papas in here. At this point, you can add your potatoes because we are gonna be placing this dish in the oven for one hour at 380 degrees, and that's enough time for you to have your chopped potatoes and for them to fully cook. Yeah. For those of you that don't have that much time, make sure to look in the description area because I'm gonna be sharing two bake times that are gonna help you get a fully cooked uh, chicken. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the uh, silicone handle and I'm gonna place this right in the oven. The pan, not the silicone stick. No, you don't wanna put this anywhere near the oven or heat or anything, just the cast iron pan. And place it right in the center rack. And boom, done, amigos. Our chicken is nice and ready. I kept it in there for an hour and what you can do is you can just lightly and gently just pour the sauce over. And the final touch is gonna to be a little bit of cilantro. It's not just for garnish, it's also for flavor. And this is just perfect for the weather that we're having today. We have some 
gentle rain, if you guys can hear it. There's nothing more perfect than pouring some of this delicious sauce over your chicken and mashed potatoes on this rainy day. Don't be shy with that sauce. We have enough for everybody. Who's ready for an amazing bite? I know you're gonna want mashed potatoes with it. It's coming. Say ah. Oh yeah. This is amazing. Wow, that's impressive. Somebody's gonna get proposed to with this chicken. What? And you're it's gonna, not you. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not me, you guys. But you're gonna impress your in-laws. You're gonna impress your family. You're gonna impress your kids, your friends, anybody you make this dish for. They're gonna be like, wow, you made that? And you're gonna say yes. I made it just for you. And sometimes if you just wanna spoil yourself, I guess you can make it for yourself. And this is what I do, it's self-love. I cook delicious food and I enjoy it. Right after. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm about to start giving that little step on how good this is. Look at how beautifully cooked those onions are. Our chicken breast is juicy, full of flavor. And we're just ready for a good time. Mm. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most easy and delicious chicken dinner. This is a recipe that my family requests often. And once I show you how to make it, you're going to understand why. You'll need two chicken breasts, seven wajillo chilies. Make sure to remove the stems and the seeds. One and a half onions three garlic cloves, one jalapeño, a small bunch of cilantro, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of butter, one and a half cups of water, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one and a half cups of melty cheese, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of ground cumin, and one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. I've already cut my chicken into smaller pieces. And next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your ground cumin, your Mexican oregano, black pepper, smoked paprika, and if you only have regular paprika, that's okay. Combine all your ingredients so that we can fully coat our chicken with the seasoning. Next, you're gonna add your salt, and just a little bit because we're gonna be using chicken bouillon, and we also wanna keep our chicken juicy. So we don't want to add too much salt right now. Add your olive oil. Add your garlic and fully combine all your ingredients. Once you fully combine all your ingredients, we're going to go ahead and set our chicken to the side for about 10 minutes. And while our chicken is resting and getting all its flavor, we're going to get started on our sauce. And for those of you that have selective eaters at home, I asked my uh, youngest son if he wanted to have chicken today. He said no, he wasn't in a mood. So I just chopped up some firm tofu. I seasoned it exactly the same way that I did our chicken and I'm gonna sear it just like we do our chicken. To your blender you want to add your water, cilantro, onion, jalapeño, and if you have family members that prefer spicy dishes you can use a serrano. Now if you have relatives from Mexico visiting you're gonna to want to use about three serranos for this recipe. Add your chicken bouillon, your guajillo chilies, and next you want to blend into a smooth. And boom, done. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your butter. Once you add your butter, you're gonna add your chicken. Give that a quick mix and continue to cook for another six minutes without moving anything. After about six minutes, you're gonna give that another good mix. Add your onions. And another good mix. And we're gonna to continue to cook for another five minutes on a medium heat. Next, you wanna give that a good mix. And you just want your onions to be translucent, okay? 
So once your onions have become a nice little translucent color, we're going to go ahead and add our sauce. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sauce that I have left over uh, to our tofu. Once you combine all your ingredients, you're going to lower your temperature to a medium low heat and we're going to continue to cook with the lid on for another 10 minutes. And I'm just going to crack the lid because if I don't, it gets wild in here. Next, you're going to add your heavy whipping cream. If you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay. You can use half and half. And if you don't have either, you can use milk. Once you combine your heavy whipping cream into your sauce, you're going to get a handful of your cheese. And maybe a little bit more. You're going to turn your burner off. You're going to give that a good mix. And we are ready to serve. All we're doing is waiting for our french fries to be fully cooked and crispy. And as far as your tofu, you can do the same. You can add your cream in here. You can add some cheese. It's really going to be up to you on how you want to dress up your tofu. And I love to serve this recipe with a little side salad. I'm gonna be using some lettuce, cucumber, tomato, carrots, and a little bit of lime. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, Thank you, make sure to squeeze your lime on your salad, okay? This dish is very Mexican restaurant style. Anytime you go out to a place where you have seafood, you have your dish, french fries, rice, salad, and let me tell you, this just gets better every time. Yes, we know we're eating chicken, but we wanted to eat the sides. Well, our audience doesn't let us eat shrimp in front of them. They don't like shrimp. <laughs> Come up here. A handful. Mmm. Whoa. This sauce is absolutely delicious. You did such a wonderful job. It's so flavorful. Sometimes I can even surprise myself. Mm. If you don't want to deal with the chicken, make the sauce, and load your french fries, and you guys are set. But I highly suggest you make the chicken, and I already showed you guys how you can make it with tofu. Super easy. Well, it's about to get really dirty in here because it is a sloppier dish for me to eat. And, well, you guys have seen me through work, so. <laughs> for this recipe, you'll need basmati rice, water, Kinder Buttery Steakhouse Seasoning that is just absolutely amazing. I highly recommend, if you guys can find this, that you purchase it and put it in everything. <laughs> Nor tomato chicken bouillon, butter, olive oil, and one medium bay leaf. Place your pan on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil. That's about one tablespoon. Add your butter. Once your butter is melted, you're gonna add your rice. Make sure to coat all your rice into that beautiful oil blend that we have. And we're going to be here for about four to six minutes until we achieve a nice golden tone. After about six minutes, you should have a nice toasty golden tone in your rice. And that's when you want to add your water. Add your tomato chicken bouillon, your kinder buttery seasoning, one bay leaf. Combine all your ingredients. Once your water comes to a boil, Place a lid over your pan and continue cooking on a low temperature for 20 to 25 minutes. After 20 minutes, you want to turn your burner off. Our rice is nice and fluffy and just very well seasoned. Cooked to perfection, amigos. But don't get too excited. What you want to do now is place your lid back on your pan or your pot, whatever you're using, and let it set for five minutes. After the five minutes, you want to take your lid off and just go through your pot and fluff up your rice. Say, ah! Amigos, please let us know what you thought about this recipe in the comment area. If you're wondering how you can get a hold of the Kinder seasoning, I found and purchased mine at Costco. 
uh, Amazon has it and I know that my grocery store has it so you guys should be able to find it and if you guys want to come back and let us know where you found it it'll help our friends out definitely go with basmati rice for this uh, for this blend Hello and welcome. Today, Cloud and I are going to be showing you how to make some cheesy chicken flautas. I'm going to be using the chicken that I showed you how to make a few days ago. And if you guys need that link, it's going to be in the description area for you. And we're just going to get started by adding some hatch chili. You guys know how much we love hatch chili. Shout out to our friends in New Mexico, in the Arizona area. Anybody that has access to hatch chili, you can <laughs> smell it in the air. You can smell it and it keeps us happy. I purposely wanted to get that juice on my fingers. <laughs> it's good perfume. Look away, look away. <laughs> it's good perfume to have. I'm adding softened onions. I left them on a pan for about four minutes on a low heat. Just have them sweat a little bit and have them cook because a lot of you don't like uh, raw onions in here and I get it. I want to keep you happy. I don't get it because I love onions, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> So for this part, if you have sour cream, you use sour cream, you have Mexican crema, Mexican sour cream, and if you don't have any of the above and you have a little bit of mayo, go ahead and add some mayo. Use what you have, friends. Make it comfortable for your home. Watch out. You're going to trigger people with that cloud. Why? Because make it comfortable for your home really upsets people, and I don't mean to upset anybody. Well, you're just saying, hey, it's your kitchen, do your thing. Yeah, it really is. Make it comfortable. So if you don't have sour cream, use a little mayo. You'll be okay. Go ahead and add a little bit of uh, black pepper. And next, we're just going to combine our ingredients a little bit so that I can add a whole bag of H-E-B. I don't know. It looks really fancy, guys, from where I stand. Let me show you. I'm going to add this H-E-B cheese. I don't know. Their cheese is always fancy. Mm -hmm. And... Where's my hatch chili cheese? Ooh, let's find that one. And since Cloud and I have been in a hatchy mood, um, Cloud brought this over and it tastes really good. So I'm gonna use a combination of both, but for sure, a whole bag of this chile. Chile? I mean, I can't stop thinking about the chile, the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Look into my eyes, you've been hypnotized by I, this hatch chili. I don't know, I don't know. This bowl might not be big enough for so much fun. You know what they're going to say in the comments, Cloud, she's doing it again. I'm doing it again. I don't know. We're going to add half of this hatch. Hatchy. You know how we always make everything so baby-like in, is. Our, in you the do. Spanish words? You hatchy. Do. I do. The diminutive? There you go. Yeah. We're Yo nomás en español, así unas quesadillitas, unos taquitos. <laughs> El diminutivo. I mean, even taquitos, flautitas. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna embarrass myself if you guys watch me mix right now. Let's <laughs> see. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna leave everything that I drop. And I don't know, you guys. <laughs> let me know how I did. <laughs> <laughs> we do get a little chatty sometimes on this channel. If you're here for the recipes, head over to the description area. Everything will be laid out for you just to get to your kitchen and start cooking. Yes, yeah, some of you don't like to cook alone. We have a lot of stay-at-home mamas, stay-at-home dads. We have a lot of you that do the cooking, and I hope that you um, enjoy our company as much as we enjoy hearing from you. So let us know in the comments how your day's going. Because if I could tell you how my day's going, it's going great, and I have so much cheese gossip about Cloud, you guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know what our you father guys, used to say about gossiping. It's all it's all good fun. It's good. <laughs> oh, you changed your tune real quick. <laughs> I don't know. You guys saw us on Instagram. We told you guys, or I told you. <laughs> and back to this chicken. You just yes. want to make sure that everything is blended, correct? Yeah, just give it a good toss, combine. Uh, taste, the flavor should be there. It's, uh, it's the birria verde roasted chicken that I'm using today. So everything's verde and it's... It's delicious, and if you don't know what verde is, it means green. And, and I highly recommend this uh, recipe for your meal prep and also for lunch boxes. These turn out great. Yeah, they really do. They turn out great. I I know you guys think that because you know we have the cooking show that um, I don't prep meals. I do. I prep. I prep for my babies, and that's the highlight of my days: prepping uh, a little lunchable, healthy mm -hmm. lunchable for them. 
you guys want to see that need a little help with the lonche with your husbands um, or the kids and I get you know what we're gonna have to bring it I get asked about that all the time oh you're gonna uh, do one on camera a prep uh, yeah all we're right. gonna do it we're gonna bring it we're gonna bring it within this next week how does that sound sounds good to me okay I think I mixed it well Ooh, we did good go ahead and taste if you need a little bit of extra salt this would be the time to add it but we are all set in here in this bowl I have some flour and I added a little bit of water just until we make a real easy paste. And this paste recipe is brought to you by the Views Club. You guys give me great feedback and if it works, I keep it. So thank you guys for sharing your tips. Uh, just in case some of you miss your mother's toothpicks and your flautas or your taquitos, now would be the time to use the toothpicks. You would be using <laughs> toothpicks. Take your glue, half moon it, Take your desired amount. You can make them super thin, you can make them thick. It's gonna be up to you. Just roll it up right there and then continue. Can you tell us the difference between taquitos and flautas? Yes, taquitos are corn tortillas and flautas are flour tortillas. But if it's rolled up, growing up, I would call it um, flautas regardless of it being flour or corn let me know if you guys are the same or if you guys are purists let me know that's okay too but today we do have flauta a little flute and you know i'm making these because cloud loves 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 to listen to um flute music and i hope that um she enjoys her playlist while eating these today <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> the part where you placed the paste go ahead and put that down like this okay that way we get a good seal for our flauta move quickly because flour tortillas will burn if your oil tends to be too hot which I'm gonna lower it just a bit and your heat should not go over about I want to say I want to say 340 comfortably it takes about a minute 45 seconds to two minutes to cook everything thoroughly What's your favorite, Cloud? Favorite what? Flautas or taquitos? Flautas because of the flour tortillas. You know, there's something about the crispy fried uh, flour tortilla that just, it's, it's comfort food for me. And boom, done. We are ready for a taste. I love how this bouquet of flowers is right in front of me as I'm filming. This is very tempting. You know, that's a beautiful Father's Day bouquet. It is. And for whoever has a birthday, <laughs> get your flautas here, get your flautas. Ooh, who's ready for a bite? <laughs> I love your mom's, your mom's spoon. Thank you. This is so mommy and this is so yummy too. This is a salsa picante. If you guys want my recipe, it's fire. It is for those of you that love spice, like it's really spicy. And that's what I'm gonna be using for this taquito. Ver. Yummy. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, and I have one for whoever likes it spicy and whoever likes it regular hatchy. You know me, pepper spray, <laughs> <me>, girl. <laughs> ooh, 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 I'm so excited. I'm so ready for this taste. It was just hanging on the side. It's a must. You have to. Mmm. Stop. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. that salsa is extra picante. It's super fire. So good. It's so good and it's good for you. I almost feel like I'm not chewing fast enough. Amigos, this is gonna be the most flavorful flautas you're ever gonna have. 
give it a go and tag me views on the road yeah tag me i know that sometimes uh, it's difficult to get my attention but i'm gonna make more of an effort now that my mind's a little bit clearer <laughs> to uh look on the hashtag views on the road and then go and heart all of your guys's creations i love it mm. If you guys are gonna have a, a family birthday, this is really good for a birthday. It's super easy to make and everybody's gonna be so happy. Somebody's gonna tell me, where's the guacamole? Where's the sour cream and all the, you don't need it. You just need a real quick salsa picante. You have everything you need inside of your flauta. But we're not gonna discourage you if you're gonna set them out like a bar style, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Lettuce, aguacate, crema, and some salsa. And frijoles, arroz, pepinos, con tajín. Sorry. I'm wow, you made me nervous. <laughs> um, we all know who Cloud is. She wants one with all the fixings. I do. But I've already had two of these just with the salsa and they're bomb. Ooh, it has me sniffling. It's so spicy. Hmm? Hmm? I was almost gonna do my food dance, but I know some of you got offended, so I'll keep that to myself. Shut it off, Cloud. I gotta get my dance on. We're about to dance, you guys. We <laughs> yeah. love you. Let's go. <laughs> it's a dance party here. All right, guys. If you have suegros, suegras that came from Mexico that are visiting or they're here to stay forever, make them this salsa. It is super, super fire. Está picante. For those suegros that like to bite into their serrano, habanero, habanero, whatever, the whole thing, wipe their tears off with the chili, this is it. Amazing. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Blow them a kiss. A kiss with my spicy mouth? Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make Chiles rellenos, baja style. We will be filling these chiles with octopus and shrimp. We're gonna be adding a diabla sauce and we're gonna add a nice, delicious, luxurious sauce over the top that you don't wanna miss. The ingredient that you do have to have for this recipe are some poblanos. We are gonna roast these peppers. You can do it on a gas grill, you can do it on an electric burner. And as you can see here, it just gives you a different aesthetic, but you're able to peel uh, the chiles and that's what we wanna achieve. So just place your chiles and we're gonna continue to roast them until they're completely roasted. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Place your chiles into a bowl, a bag, just somewhere where they can steam for about five to six minutes. And I like to use this bowl. It's been working great for my chiles. All you wanna do is remove the skin and the seeds and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And after about five minutes, you'll see that placing it in the bowl with the lid, it just calls for an easier removal of the skin. Just like that, just take it easy, be gentle. Don't press too hard because you don't wanna to have too many slits in your chile and we want all our filling to stay in there. So just be gentle. See how easy it comes off? Mm -hmm. It smells like a Mexican restaurant in here. It Doesn't smells it? really nice. Ooh, <laughs> it's getting you excited, Cloud. Yay. Once you remove all the skin, go ahead and Start making a slit. Sometimes they're so soft that they give you the slit on their own like this one did to me. And you have to be really careful in here. Some of you like the seeds in here. I'm gonna tell you I am not one of them. And any tia that I have that had seeds in her chiles rellenos or any restaurant that I go to, I am not interested. That's just me. Well, I like when you remove that part too because you're also removing any potential spicy vines in there, veins. Yeah, you, you called it. <laughs> yeah, the veins. Yeah, you are. And just remove all the seeds out of there. Nobody wants to bite into these seeds. They're a bit coarse. Once you've prepped your chile, you want to add your all-purpose flour to your chile. And that's going to allow the egg batter to adhere uh, to our chile. Give it a gentle shake and set it to the side. Take your octopus and place it on your cutting board. And what we want to do is we want to cut the ends. 
And now we are just gonna make sure that our octopus is nice and clean. And if you turn this over, sometimes you can find a little ink sack in here and extras. So you just wanna make sure you remove them. Luckily, my octopus came fairly cleaned. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna cut the beak, the little mouth, that little hole right there. That's what that is. And you just wanna cut it out just like that. You can do this before or after uh, you cook it, but I like to do it before. I'm very lucky, I'm using a frozen octopus and I just thawed it out and luckily uh, where I purchased it from, I don't have to worry about any of the ink sacs, which is nice. We have a little eye over here, which we're gonna remove. And right at the bottom, you're gonna see where the eyes would be. You can slice them out or you can keep them in. It's gonna be up to you. Fill around if you see anything that's pokey. Uh, you wanna cut it out, but for us, we are perfectly fine there. What you wanna do next is you wanna spread your octopus and in between the tissue there, you wanna do a slice through all of them, okay? Just slice it like that. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you a, a pretty looking octopus when it comes out of that instant pot. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the connective tissue here. And you guys have jokes. You guys are gonna say, Steph, you're acting like you're you're performing surgery whenever you're <laughs> cutting into protein. Friends, just treat it with respect, okay? That's all we're looking for. Some respect. My mouth is watering. <laughs> oh my goodness, do you hear that? Cloud's mouth is watering because she knows how buttery this octopus is gonna be. Stop mm. the production. <laughs> What'd you do last night, Cloud? <laughs> I'm not gonna say. And what you want to do next is you want to add salt. You can put this in your bowl, but I'm gonna keep it on here just so that you guys can see it. But at home, to keep yourselves clean, place it in your bowl and add the salt and massage and clean it in here. But for us, we're gonna do it just on top of this cutting board so that you guys can see. And you want to make sure that you're massaging each tentacle gently while scrubbing off any kind of excess that you see on the skin. And when, you'll see that once you use the salt, it turns the skin really smooth. Do you see that? I do. Nice you can feel it. Yeah, it is exfoliating the tentacles. And be thorough about it, okay? Really get in there. This is the funnest thing that I've done in a very long time, I'm just saying. It's fun to watch. Is it? Mm-hmm. It feels like I'm on the set of a cooking show. <laughs> oh, wow, Cloud. Welcome to our show, Hi. friends. <laughs> she sounded like you guys in the comments now, you guys. She doesn't realize that I'm giving you guys a, cook a cooking show here. You go Okay, I'm stumbling. <laughs> Once you've massaged and exfoliated your octopus, you wanna make sure to place it in your bowl because we are gonna insert this in the pressure cooker. Set your pressure cooker on warm and you wanna make sure you're adding hot water. If you guys like this kettle, I'll link it in the description area. And by I, I mean Cloud. Okay. Thanks Cloud, we love you. <laughs> happy to help, love you guys too. To your hot water, you're gonna add your salt and your Mexican oregano. White vinegar. I love the way the white vinegar tastes with the, I mean, smells with the Mexican the oregano. Mmm, you know it's gonna be good. You know it's gonna be good. Give us a thumbs up and leave your comment. Hey! And while you're here, you might as well subscribe. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you guys.
Next, you wanna get a good grip on your octopus. So when you're picking it up, just grab it right there. And we're just gonna dip it in a few times, okay? In that hot water. Move it around. Do you see how the tentacles start to curl up? We wanna give this a really pretty look. So once you're done having fun dipping your tentacles into that hot water and you see that your tentacles have curled beautifully, go ahead and place all your octopus nicely into your pressure cooker. Since we had on keep warm, we're gonna go ahead and cancel that and we're gonna pressure cook for uh, 15 minutes. Ooh, our octopus is ready. Ta-da! How beautiful does our octopus look? I think it did a wonderful job. Isn't it amazing? It kept the integrity of the color. When you take your octopus out of your pressure cooker, you're gonna see that sometimes the impurities stick and that's okay, just get a, a cloth or a wet paper towel and just wipe it down. It's not necessary. But no, you know, it's, it's gonna be up to you. Go ahead and start slicing the tentacles so that we can cut this into small little bite-sized pieces. Sorry friends, we got ahead of ourselves and took a nice taste of this octopus. And all you wanna do is just slice it into small little pieces. If you use this cooking method, you're not gonna to have to worry about that extra chewing that you do when the octopus is not properly cooked. This is cooked to perfection. It is, it just melts in your mouth. It's it's uh, softer than chicken, uh, less chewy than shrimp. And I think just the aesthetic usually turns people off, but the flavor is just out of this world. A lot of people are sleeping on octopus. And if you're not, you're gonna love this dish. And boom, done. I'm just gonna place our chopped octopus right next to our raw shrimp. To your pan, you wanna add a drizzle of olive oil, butter, and you wanna add your onions, add your garlic, and we just wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on a medium low heat, just until you see your onions sweat a bit, they become a little bit translucent. That's gonna amplify the flavor of our sauce. Mm, can you smell that, Cloud? I uh, love it when the garlic and onion hit the pan with oil. Say, ah, this smells absolutely divine. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add all of our ingredients into our blender. And you don't wanna wash your pan just yet. We wanna keep our infused oil uh, because we're gonna come back and finish cooking our sauce. In this cup, I have hot water with our chicken bouillon blend, but if you have fresh chicken broth, you can use that. So just make sure that when you're pouring it in, it's nice and hot. I've removed the seeds from the chipotle and we're just gonna add that to our blender. Ooh, I was hoping that didn't splash. <laughs> Today I'm using a finely shredded mozzarella cheese, but I suggest you use whatever cheese you like. And what I mean by that, any kind of cheese that melts will work perfectly for this recipe. But I really like mozzarella. What can I say? If you like mozzarella, let us know in the comments. Mexican oregano, ground cumin, black pepper, and last but not least, some half and half. If all you have is heavy whipping cream, perfect, it's just a creamier consistency. But for this recipe, you want it a little bit loose, so I suggest to use half and half. And next, you wanna blend until smooth, and that should take you anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds if you're using a high-powered blender. And boom, done. Place your pan on a medium heat, and you're gonna add your sauce. Once you reach a boil for your sauce, you wanna set your pan on a simmer. You wanna stir periodically. You do not wanna overcook this sauce and you only wanna cook it for another six to eight minutes. And after six to eight minutes, go ahead and turn your burner off and set your delicious sauce to the side. To your pot of boiling water, you wanna add your onion, your Wajillo chilies, and make sure to remove the stem and the seeds, as many as you can your chiles de arbol, tomatoes, and we're gonna to continue to boil for about eight to 10 minutes just until you see your chiles and your tomatoes are nice and soft. After eight to 10 minutes, you're gonna notice that all of your ingredients are nice and soft, so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna place them in our blender.
add your chipotles. And this is a wonderful recipe because sometimes we open a can of chipotles and we only use two and then we have to refrigerate. But for this particular recipe, it's so great because you get to use the whole can of chipotle. That makes me happy. And the same with our chicken broth. I'm using water and chicken bouillon, but if you have fresh chicken broth, you can use that. If you like a seafood broth, you can use that as well and just pour it right on into the blender. And now we're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your sauce. Continue to cook your sauce for about four to five minutes on a low heat and stir periodically. After you've been cooking your sauce for four to five minutes, you wanna turn it off. You wanna add your octopus and your uncooked shrimp. We're not in the business of overcooking shrimp these days. You don't wanna overcook your shrimp, so you just wanna add them into your sauce, combine them well, and we still have to cook this a little bit longer, so that prevents for overcooking and chewy shrimp. Go ahead and place a lid over your pan and set this to the side. Next, you wanna fill it with your favorite cheese. Today, I'm using Oaxaca. Then you wanna fill it with our delicious <laughs> a la diabla seafood mix we have going on here. <laughs> Friends, if for some reason you don't have access to shrimp or to octopus or something like that, you can make this with imitation crab meat. It works. King crab works great too. <laughs> make it comfortable for your home. That is correct. And I'm just going to set these to the side until we're ready to dip in our batter. I've divided our eggs into our egg whites and our egg yolks, and I have our all-purpose flour here. You want to make sure that you're using room temperature eggs. And now we are just gonna beat our eggs until they have a soft peak, kind of like our tres leches cake. You do not wanna overbeat your egg whites at this moment, but we're gonna be here for a little bit, especially because I'm using our hand mixer, which is what I love to use for our chiles rellenos. Let's get started. And we are all set. Some nice fluffy little clouds. You see that little soft peak? I see it. That's what we're looking for. If you push it, when you start seeing it this, within like 20 seconds on here, you're gonna get really stiff peaks and it's gonna change the outcome of the texture of your chiles. Thanks for the tip. Okay, so now we're gonna add our egg yolks and let me just turn this on. There we go. And we're gonna slowly incorporate them into our mix here. We're gonna incorporate our egg yolks a little bit at a time and we're gonna start folding them in. Be very gentle with this part. Just like this, quick little fold. Down the middle, quick little fold. That little mixture really mixed them up well in there. I like that. <laughs> they look beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I know you don't like it when I use this word, guys, but these egg yolks look really sexy. <laughs> I'm just saying, they really do. They're showing off. They really are. Be very, very gentle. My stomach's growling, it's me today. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody feed her. I need to be fed. Once you see that you incorporated your egg yolks pretty good, you're gonna start sprinkling in some flour and we're gonna fold it in. And sprinkle a little bit at a time because we don't want this to go flat. We want it to stay nice and fluffy. And you know, this is my mother's method that I'm using. And I think my mother's changed the way that people make chiles rellenos all over the world. So shout out to my mother. <laughs> Hello, mom. You know what's really cool? Hmm. That the first time I ever made these, I made them on um, on a mukbang style. You did, I remember. If you it guys remember that. Yeah, it was my first time. I was really excited. Because I do baby myself about certain dishes that I only allow certain people to make for me. Or I only eat them with certain people. For some reason, this is the dish I find that most Mexican men go home to eat with their mom. Unless they've got, you know, they've got it locked down in the kitchen, they can make their own or their partner can make them some. But usually I find that the Mexican men, that's where they go. They find them at their mom's. Girl, I've known men. I've had a lot of guy friends. And let me tell you, Cloud is correct. <laughs> 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 
they men will brag about their mothers uh chile rellenos and tamales right in the tortillas those are the basic ones and enchiladas yeah so regardless of what you make if you want to get into your man's good gracious or your partner's make sure you find out how these mamas are making them be good to the mamas but you're welcome to borrow our recipes you might change their mind might change their mind that's right suegras look I mean, away i mean well but look away <laughs> <laughs> all right no, friends so need a break too they do they do need a break so learn how to make them um all right friends we're we're set with our batter i'm just gonna heat up our oil real quickly and then we're just gonna dip and pour it right into our oil you guys have seen it before. Um, if you guys need extra help, make sure to follow the detailed recipe. I'll link it in the description area and here at the end where you can just click my picture of the chiles rellenos and it'll take you straight there. Checking our oil and it's nice and ready. Let's go ahead and place our chile relleno in here. Go ahead and place it into your egg batter. Ooh, I'm gonna need my spoon to help me. Go ahead and cover it just like that. It's having hot mom summer in there. <laughs> Go ahead and bring it up. And we're going to drop it because it's hot. And any extra on the spoon, go ahead and just put it at the top like that. And one thing my mother is known for on how big her chiles are. <laughs> right? She, is. she yeah. makes the fluffiest, largest chiles you're going to have. That's a good reputation to have, Mom. It is. Go ahead and bring some of that oil to bathe the chile just like this. I'm feeling a little jealous of this chile right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's having the best bath ever. If you're wondering what kind of oil I'm using today, today I'm using peanut oil, but you can make it comfortable for your home. And you want to make sure to bathe it with the oil before you give it that flip, okay? You want to seal that first layer of the egg batter? Is that what you're doing? Yes. And you're going to need two spatulas to flip it over. Be quick. There we go. Woo! You guys want that side angle that we learned from Cloud? Hey! <laughs> and this is done quickly. As quick as you cook eggs, everything's nice and warm in there. I'm going to lift it up so you guys can see how thick that is. That is not a joke. Do you see how nothing fell out of that chile relleno? It is absolutely perfect, amigos. All of you can make this. Just take your time, okay? So after about two to three minutes of bathing in the oil, it's time to take them out. I'm going to continue with the rest of their chiles, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to plate this delicious chile relleno. Before we add our chiles, I like to put a little bit of the sauce here at the bottom. You know, a little extra we all love. Next, your chile. And boom, done, amigos. We are ready to eat this deliciousness. Oh my goodness. Isn't that beautiful? You get different tones of red sauce. Say, ah. Oh man, that's perfect. We have such a wonderful combination of chiles that you can taste the smokiness from the chipotle, but it really doesn't minimize the flavor that you have from your a la diabla sauce from the filling. So good. Mmm, that's so good. What I really love about this dish is the texture of the octopus and the shrimp complement the fluffiness and the tenderness from your chile relleno. To all of you that love spicy seafood, you're going to absolutely love this dish. Please make sure to come back and let us know in your comments, your thoughts. We would love to know all about it. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most refreshing drink to keep you cool this hot season. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need six cups of water, five cucumbers, half a pineapple, juice of one lemon, 
your desired amount of mint. And for sweetness, you can use one fourth of a cup of sugar. And you'll need a lot of ice and a mop. Yes. Let's start by peeling and chopping our cucumbers into smaller blendable pieces. Next, we're gonna slice our pineapple. If you don't have access to fresh pineapple, not to worry, you can use canned pineapple, canned pineapple juice, frozen pineapple, and even your juice concentrate, which is my favorite. Uh, you can use all of those and I'll leave the suggestions in the description for you. Most people don't like the core and I absolutely love it. Mmm. So juicy. But... And since I have beautiful godchildren that love sweet, uh, fresh drinks, I'm going to be using sugar today. But if you don't want to use sugar, not to worry, you don't have to. You can just keep the natural sugars. You can use lemon or lime. It's really going to be up to you. Ooh, this is a juicy, juicy lemon. Ooh. Just want to remove your seeds. So just continue to dissolve your lemon and sugar blend and go ahead and set that to the side. We're going to be blending in two batches. So go ahead and add half of your water, cucumber, and pineapple and blend until smooth. And boom, done. I'm going to be straining our cucumber drink so that we have a smooth, refreshing drink. But if you like the fibers, go ahead and just pour it into your pitcher. And while this is straining, I'm gonna get started with our next batch. And for our second batch, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it with our mint. Once you're done straining your cucumber drink, you're gonna go ahead and add your sweetener. Give that a quick mix and we are ready to serve. Make sure that once you have your pineapple just like this, don't throw this away, place it in the freezer and then I use it for a nice ice cold cup. <laughs> I get super mom points for this, just you so do. you guys know. And boom, done. Who's ready for a taste? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Our Reviews Club friends wanna know if adding all that ice will water down their agua fresca. Yes, it will. And for me, I love infused water. So whoever gets it from the container first is gonna have a bold, full of flavor uh, drink. But the ones that get here late are gonna get a more watered down version, more of an infused flavor. And that's perfectly fine. The point here is to keep you hydrated and keep you fresh. Absolutely delicious and refreshing. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we hope you stay cool this summer season. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.